So these are some of the simplest wireless boards that you can buy. So there's a um, transmitter and a receiver in here and these were about a pound in UK money, um, so less than two dollars. Let's get these out we can have a look. So these are 433 megahertz modules uh, so that's that's the transmitter this one here and this is the receiver we'll look in detail in a moment because you can you can easily find the the schematic for these uh, so these use the 433 megahertz band um, which in the UK and in in Europe uh, in general I think is designated as the ISM band so industrial scientific something I can't remember um, uh, but th th that's that that's an unlicensed band so you can transmit to very low power using devices like this um, so so we'll set this up and have a go so we'll connect this the transmitter to one Arduino and we'll connect the receiver to another Arduino and um, and then we'll transmit a message across so just before we get started wiring things up I'll talk a little bit about the the theory of how we send signals over wireless um, yeah and then we'll get to wiring it up perhaps I'll uh, solder a bit of wire on here as the antenna as well um, so these will probably work without any antenna because I'm going to have them a very short distance apart but it's always best to have some kind of minimal antenna. So let's get into the theory a little bit. So these modules, um, if you search for um, ASK, which means amplitude shift keying, or OOK, which means on-off keying, um, if you search for those terms on, on eBay or AliExpress, for example, you'll probably hit these modules because these are uh, very cheap and very common and you've got uh, libraries already written for the for the Arduino so a lot of applications use these um, but what do those mean ASK and OOK well um, basically if you want to send a signal over radio then um, you might start off with a signal let's let's say I'm um, we're, we're going to be sending binary signals so let's say we have a, a binary message like this uh, one zero zero one for example so so that's a um, serial uh, serial depiction of uh, four bits of information um, if you want more information about serial how serial works I'll put a link here to the last video actually where I talked about using serial to um, interconnect microcontrollers. So so we have the four bits sent in time one after another. So I should say, so this is a graph, it's got uh, amplitude up here and we've got time going in this direction. But what we want to do is superimpose that on a, on a radio signal in order to uh, send that information uh, wirelessly. So one of these modules uh, so the transmitter w has this crystal on and we'll look at the schematic in a minute but the so it has a crystal that so it can produce a uh, a sine wave um, s sequence of 433 megahertz so again if you if you looked at the graph of uh, amplitude versus time then what you've got is this sine wave like that. Um, and this is 433 megahertz and so the wavelength between those two points uh, you can work out uh, from C equals F lambda where, where C is the the speed of light. So if I wanted to work out the wavelength lambda, lambda is C over F. 
which in this case would be 3 times 10 to the 8 uh, meters per second divided by the frequency here was 433 megahertz so 433 times 10 to the 6 my calculator out we've got so 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 433 times 10 to the 6 and we get uh, 0.69 that is 0.69 meters so the the wave has 0.69 meters between the the peak at the beginning of each cycle of the wave so actually this number that we've worked out here lambda the wavelength gives us a way of figuring out how long the antenna should be because that antennas typically are uh, the same as the wavelength or sometimes they're half the wavelength but uh, an antenna works better if it's tuned to the to the wavelength of the signal so so we have this 433 megahertz signal and we have this data signal that we want to send and um, we can su superimpose one on the other using a process called modulation. So for example, uh, if I put things side by side like this, so there's, there's my input signal and here's my 433 megahertz. And if I modulate one with the other, then what I get is this little burst here wherever I've got a one. So, so here I've got 433 megahertz being sent and here I've got two time slots where nothing is being sent and then another one being sent as a burst of 433 megahertz. So this is, this is what they call um, on-off keying, meaning that when you've got a one then you're sending the signal and it's on and when you've got a zero you're not sending a signal and it's off so it's uh, on off you know like you're pressing a button basically and uh, so this is why this is uh, these modules are referred to as OOK because it's one of the simplest kind of protocols that you can you can execute so what happens on this transmitter module is you have your ones and zeros going into the data pin here and it modulates the 433 megahertz so what comes out of the antenna looks like this you know it's got bursts of 433 megahertz for the ones now um, you'll, you, you'll also though see this phrase um, ASK which means amplitude shift keying uh, and basically what that means is you've got different signals that you can send as different amplitudes so rather than just having ones and zeros what you can imagine is the input signal it might have um, a zero amplitude amplitude and time again a zero amplitude for the two bits zero zero and then you might have a bigger voltage for zero one and bigger still for one zero and then finally the maximum val value uh, one one so you basically got four voltages each of which represents two bits so you can see that um, um, if you've only got two voltage levels, 0 and 1, then basically ASK is the same as on-off keying. But in general, ASK allows you to communicate more values. So then if we modulated that, that signal, then we would get uh, a burst of 433 like this that represents uh, 0, 1. 
and for one zero we'd have a slightly louder uh, uh, 433 megahertz burst and then finally one one we'd have the maximum um, like that so you've got four levels that you can represent you know nothing and three other levels of uh, amplitude and then of course when you receive this in an in a general ASK system you have to measure this amplitude because the, the amplitude tells you which one of these categories you've got but um, today we're just going to use this simple uh, on off keying system um, and there are, there are good libraries for both of these modules uh, on the Arduino and so what we'll do is we'll send some data from here to here um, and this this one you can see that the receiver is a much more sophisticated uh, device than the transmitter and this has um, this this has a couple of transistors on it and it's got a uh, a dual op amp there and we'll look at the circuit di diagram and see uh, what's what's on board there so first of all let's let's wire it up so I've got a couple of Arduinos. I'll connect the transmitter to an Arduino Mega, which I've got lying around here, and the receiver can connect to a Nano, and we'll have a look at information being sent between those two. So I've got the two modules wired up now. So uh, this is the transmitter over here. So I've got the transmitter module connected to the uh, Mega 2560, and I've got uh, the receiver module here connected to the Arduino Nano. So we'll look at those in a bit more detail. So so on the receiver side, so I've, I've put this 17 centimeter wire on here. So 17 centimeters is a, a quarter of the the wavelength that we calculated earlier. So quarter, lambda over four it is. So because um, antennas usually work best when they're some you know f fraction or multiple of the wavelength so we've got a, a straight piece of wire here um, I suspect these modules would work even without antennas because the distances are, are very short but just for completeness so you can see there are there are only uh, three wires connected here so we've got um, the uh, the red and the brown are power wires and then the center two pins on this module are both connected together on the same trace on the board so this is the data output and that's on the orange pin and so i've got the orange going to uh, d11 on here which seems to be the default in the um in the library that i'm using so we'll we'll, we'll have a look at the source code in a minute and see what that looks like so this is just sending the receive data into pin 11 so that we can see it in the program. And then we have the transmitter sides on the transmitter side. Again, we've got three wires. So in this case, the um, black and the white are power wires. And then the gray is the uh, transmit pin. So we've got the transmit pin going into pin five here. And again, we'll see when we look at the, the code for the transmitter, we'll see that pin pin five, digital five, is the one that we've chosen to be the transmitter pin. So let's take a look at the uh, the code that's running in these modules now. So if we look at the transmitter first, so the most important thing about this, this code is we're using this radio head module so that's the, the name of the radio library we're using uh, and I'll put put a link in the description down below so that you can go and download this library yourself it's a, a very sophisticated radio library and we're only using a very small subset of its functionality here so we're just using this ASK the ampli amplitude shift keying um, part of the library so um, so here we're creating the uh, the driver for the transmit side and uh, so this is 2000 bits per second which is the default for the system and we've got receive pins 4 and transmit pin 5 in fact only pin 5 is important here because this is only the trans transmitter side on uh, uh, on the uh, 2560 the uh, the Arduino Mega 
Um, so we've got a bit of initialization here, setting up the serial port to the PC, checking that the radio driver is loaded. And then after that, we're entering the loop. So we've got the string mega2560. So we're sending that string, just uh, checking whether it's being transmitted to the other end. And then we've got a thousand millisecond delay. So what this is going to do is send that string every second, basically. And now if we look at the receive side also, on the receive side, you see we're loading the same ASK uh, library. Um, here the, the initialization is slightly different. So um, I'm using all defaults. So the defaults are, so the speed is 2000 bits per second to match the transmission side. And um, the receive pin, the default pin is uh, 11 or D11, digital 11, which is where we've got the module plugged in uh, on our Arduino Nano. Otherwise, we're dropping into this this loop here. So we've created a buffer. So the buffer is 10 bytes long. So we can receive up to 10 bytes at a time. And uh, we're calling this function here driver.receive. Um, which will fill the buffer with up to 10 bytes. And this ampersand here means that um, the driver.receive can also change the value of buff len. So if if we only receive three bytes, then buff len will, will have three uh, when we come through here and, and it won't have 10 anymore. So this is giving us the correct count of bytes that have been received. So let's have a look at what that looks like. I'll scroll in the console here. If I clear it, you can see that every second or so we receive eight bytes. And this is the mega 2560. So this is the, the string that's been sent from the, the transmitter. So, um, you know, really quite simple to set this up. And um, and it's great to have that that functionality all uh, included in a in a library so that we don't have to kind of fiddle about with the radio side ourselves very much. I should also say that the I mean this Radiohead library it does some quite clever stuff. So rather than just send the the message itself over the line, so we were sending this message mega twenty five sixty. It's quite common in radio technology to send some extra information, some some check information to make sure that the data wasn't corrupted on its journey across the wireless. So what happens with this RH frame is uh, actually the library adds on what's called a preamble, which is basically alternating ones and zeros. I think it's 30, 36 bits of one, ones and zeros. So that, um, that tells the receiver that something is about to happen on the line. When it sees the preamble, it knows that a message is coming. And uh, so what it, the, the other thing that the radio head module does is it adds a, a length field here. So it actually puts eight in here so that the receiver knows how many bytes are going to arrive. And then what it also does is it uh, adds this FCS field. So FCS is uh, I think it's 16 bits, might be 32. I'm not I'm not sure, but um, and it, anyway, it's um, it's a checksum. Um, and uh, what a checksum is is it's a number that allows you to check that this data was valid. So the transmitter works out it it runs a function over this string here and that produces a value that gets put into the F FCS field which is um, uh, it's not totally unique to, to that string but it's um, it's somewhat unique uh, so it allows you to detect whether the data has been corrupted or tampered with in some way and so uh, then, then what the receiver can do when the receiver receives this whole frame it does the same calculation on the data field here and generates its own FCS. And if the two FCS values don't agree, then it means that the data has somehow been corrupted uh, while uh, 
you know, on its journey. And you can understand how that can happen with wireless. So if, for example, you know, while um, this this data is being transmitted, somebody uh, switches on a light bulb, then you might get a little electrical glitch and a radio glitch. So you get a kind of splatter of noise here. And some of that noise could be at 433 4, megahertz. So what's happened there is that you've actually changed some of the data in the in the payload. So it's no longer as good as when it was sent from the transmitter. So then what happens is when the receiver receives the data and it does this calculation over this data, then some of these characters are not the same. They might, you know, be be funny, funny values. Uh, and not the values that were originally sent. And so uh, when the FCS is calculated, it will be a different number to the FCS that the transmitter uh, worked out. And in that case, when the FCSs don't match, the uh, the data is rejected and the receiving program doesn't see the, the data. So that's, that's quite nice because it allows you to validate that the data is good when it when it gets to the receiver. Now, one more thing we should do is actually look at the circuit diagram of these modules. And luckily for me, um, somebody's already done the hard work. and You can easily find these on, online at ver in various places so you can see what the circuit is. So if we look at the transmitter, first of all, this is a, the common name for that transmitter, F FS1000A. And um, so this is the edge connector so you've got the power vcc and ground and then you've got the data pin and you can see it's quite a simple design so what we've got here is basically uh, an oscillator here so this is an oscillator so this is the um the uh, crystal oscillator uh, that you can see in the in the can on the board there so this is the the crystal oscillator and there's some support components a couple of different uh, inductors um, which you can also see on the board um, a resistor there to bias the transistor so this is oscillating at 433 megahertz and then you've got the connection to the antenna here and then basically this other transistor here is just a switch so as the data pin um, is switching up and down with ones and zeros like this this is actually switching the transistor on and off. And so uh, this point here will be switching on and off. And so the the um, and, and this is in the in the ground line of the oscillator. So this will make the oscillator stop and start uh, in time with the ones and zeros. So it's a very simple modulator design. The uh, receiver is much more sophisticated, but I can show you the kind of uh, the block diagram. So again, here here we have the edge connector here. So here we've got the data out. So this is the receive side effectively. Um, so this these are two parts of the uh, dual op amp, the LM358, which I'll talk about in a minute. And here we've got the antenna, um, there's a, a an inductor and a and a capacitor which form a, a resonant circuit here. So this will be a resonant circuit for the 433 megahertz band. So this first stage here with the transistor, this is a um, this is an amplification stage. This is boosting up the very weak signal that you've got from the antenna. And then we get, get to this joining point here. So this is going uh, both into the op amp uh, and it's going into this circuit here. And this, this circuit is also, as in the other circuit, this is a, a 433 megahertz oscillator. So you see there's these various inductor capacitor um, setups in order to tune it to a particular value. So what we're doing here is we're mixing the 433 megahertz with the received signal and that allows us to demodulate the data. So what you've got here is a, a demodulated version. Um, so you've got the the ones and zeros coming down here. Um, and now we're going to boost it up again. So this is an 
inverting amplif amplification stage. So this is boosting up the signal to a higher level. And then this second part of the LM358 has actually been set up as a comparator. So the idea of a of a comparator is to clean up the signal because what we want here is um, we want very clear ones and zeros coming out. We want it to go up to VCC and and ground, and and we want it to be very clear what uh, you know two two values are there. So that means that if you've got some some slightly you know kind of wobbly looking data coming out of the the receiver, then this gets translated by the comparator into very clear transitions between VCC and ground. So that's the job that the comparator is doing. So, I mean, you know, it's not a really big uh, component count, you know, and um, so, so I mean, there's only the three active elements. There's the dual op amp, there's, there's two transistors, and the rest is just all kind of passive components. Um, and this is why, you know, these two circuits together uh, make a, a, a very cheap transceiver and, and in fact you can you can buy a pair of these modules for under a pound which is really tremendous value. So there we are that's the uh, the 433 megahertz modules so the FS1000A and the XYMK5V uh, which are two very common very cheap modules uh, that you can buy um, you know, please do uh, buy your own experiment. Um, leave comments down below. I would, I would love to see your comments. And uh, all the source code here, I'm going to put on my GitHub site so that you can uh, recreate the same environment if you want to. And uh, so, everyone, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.